What's up guys? We are back with another wave of Super 7 Ultimates and we're jumping into Transformers Wave 2. It's been a little while since we've had Transformers. I'm really excited for this wave because it's all over the place. And we're taking a look at a Decepticon first. And it's not Megatron. We're taking a look at Bludgeon. I'm really excited for this one. Give me all the weird stuff. And that's pretty much what they're doing. Especially, especially with this wave outside of Megatron. It's all weird stuff. And now he comes in our standard Ultimate Style package. You've got that foil emboss shot of Bludgeon there on the front of the slipcover. And you got your foil emboss logo on the back, your Decepticons logo. I really like the packaging for this line. Pop that slipcover off, of course, and you've got your figure there in the big window. We've got that sort of purple color scheme for the Decepticon figures. And then the back of the box gives you that a sort of readout for his power set, things like that, and then a little bit of artwork for Bludgeon as well. But, I mean, yeah, this guy is super exciting, very different, very weird stuff. I'm all for it. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our Ultimates Bludgeon. So we're starting off another wave of Transformers Ultimates with a Pretender, which I still find ridiculous, but I love it because I really liked Pretenders when I was a kid, it, you know, I've said it a few times, I've never been a huge Transformers collector. I've been in it at various times, and Pretenders were always cool to me. Like, Roadblock was one of my favorite Transformers as a kid, just to give you an example. But I never had a bludgeon, so I'm actually pretty excited to take a look at this guy. He is fairly going to be fairly standard for the, the Transformers Ultimates, if you're familiar with Wave 1. And I say that in the sense that there's a lot of limitations with this figure that just translate kind of oddly. Here. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. I'm going to take the helmet off for this so you can see how well the head moves. It's okay. The helmet, I'm going to note now, this doesn't connect in any way. It just sort of sits there and it's not exactly the most snug. Like it's snug, but it's not, which makes no sense. But that's, when you get him in hand, you'll understand what that means. So we've got a head that is on a, on a neck that also moves. He can look up super, super far, like farther than most Ultimates can. Really, really nice tilts. He can't really look down though. He's got he's got a big old chin and it just hits his chest right there. The arms go out only this far. And that's mostly due to these shoulder pads. They of course are going to sort of hinder him swiveling too because he's got these cutouts right here and they just sort of get in the way. So arm movement is pretty bad. You've got bicep swivel, you've got single jointed elbow, it's about 70 degrees maybe it's not 90 by any means you've got it swivels also you've got your swivel and you've got vertical hinges on the wrist in the box hands feel kind of loose like uh, they haven't been a problem but they feel kind of loose you surprisingly have an ab crunch i was really surprised he could do this and you do have a waist twist but it doesn't really do a whole lot like that's not it crunches but it's it's not exactly doing anything legs go out about this far You've got a bunch of stuff in the way, so you've got the rubbery skirt piece, and you've got these sort of packs that are on his, well, sort of a belt. They kick forward about, about that far, kick backwards slightly. You do have a thigh twist up there, and then you've got your single jointed knees, which give you 90. You've also got a boot cut right there at the top of the ankle. You've got that. Really, really nice hinge backward, but no hinge forward. And then you have a little bit of rocker because you've got the like stirrup things. He moves okay. He moves very much in line with the Transformers that I've messed with in Wave 1. So good, not great. It's okay. I will say though, he has some looseness going on here that I'm not, not a fan of. Like this is pretty bad. He's really, really jiggly. Even more so on this right leg, your left. Uh, that one does seem to be a little problematic. He's, he stood up just fine. Like I haven't had any problems with balance as a result, but at the same time, it is kind of worrisome. So if you're familiar with Transformers Wave 1, you basically know what's going on when it comes to movement for Bludgeon. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, I'd say for the most part, they got him pretty good. I don't have a G1 Bludgeon for comparison, obviously. I'm not the guy for that kind of thing. But I do think he looks very, very on brand here when it comes to that classic Bludgeon look. Uh, you do get some options to change him up slightly. Well, one option, I suppose. He's got a bunch of weapons that will connect to him also. that's That was his thing. So we'll talk about that later. But overwhelmingly, you know, a lot of unique sculpt here. Well, all unique sculpt here. He's very boxy. He's very thick and beefy for a, for a robot. But of course, the biggest aspect of this guy is just the idea itself. The fact that he is, a, you know, a pretender in this skeletal samurai warlord disguise basically so it's it's ridiculous and it was one of the reasons why i've always liked this look it just 
dumb, but it works really well as a toy. Like this is a very toyetic kind of design. A skull man with a robo body, whatever, you know, without knowing the context behind this, that's what it looks like at first. Colors are super bright and vibrant. So late 80s, early 90s, tons of yellow. You've got the orange, you've got that sort of magenta purpley color. There's a little bit of paint on him. Honestly, not a whole lot. You've got some of those gray tones and that's basically it. Just about damn near everything else on this guy is cast plastic, which it's not necessarily a negative, I suppose, because that's, that's what he was. He was just chunks of solid color in many ways. So I guess that's all right. I do think uh, that overwhelmingly the sculpt is nice though. Looks very robotic, looks very chunky, looks very G1 Transformers to me, looks very Pretenders to me. Uh, so I'm happy with the way he turned out. I think he looks good. It's a goofy, goofy design that does, you know, it does warrant a toy. Like this is the kind of thing I like seeing in toys. It's the kind of like stuff I like seeing as a kid, yet I never had him. The defining characteristic for him is of course going to be, you know, the head sculpt and the helmet. This is the more, the more toy helmet. There is a more comic helmet that, that you can swap. And like I said, it just sort of sits on his head. It's okay. Like, I feel like it's, I feel like it's snug in certain spots on the head, but not enough that I feel like it's not just going to fall off at times because it does seem kind of loose as well. But the sculpt is good. I'm happy with it. And of course, that color matches his armor really well. The skeleton head, though, I think looks great. And is also, again, just a really goofy aspect to this design and what he is. Mostly just white with those uh, sunken sockets for the nose, for the eyes. And then you do even have, you know, like the skeletal, like the cracks that run along the top of a, of a skull. Those are all in there too. And I think it looks really good. It's a nice stark co contrast from his very colorful armor to just have this sort of white and black up there. But it really sells the idea of what they're going for. It's a skull man in some robo armor that just also is, you know, a robot in disguise. But he looks really cool. Very happy with the way he turned out. You know, despite some of the shortcomings on the articulation side, I really think the visuals make up a lot of that for me. Now, as far as some size comparisons go, let's start with other ultimates. So we've got Bludgeon there in the middle. We've got the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Goldar on the left. And we've got the Bonsai Tron Ultimates from Wave 1 Transformers on the right to give you a, another Transformers comparison. Bludgeon is a little bigger than average. He's very chunky. He's not like super huge. He's not, you know, he's not bigger than Optimus or anything like that. But he is maybe slightly larger than average because he's he's just kind of a bulky, chunky figure. Let's do some other stuff. Let's do let's do figure arts. Here is Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Let's do a Marvel Legends figure. Here is here's a, just a standard male. Here's Forge. Let's take Goku aside. Let's do a, let's do a Legions figure. Here is Aerithir. And let's do another kind of mech robot type of thing but very much unrelated. Let's do a Gundam Universe figure. There is the the God slash Burning Gundam. So, you know, as you can see, he's still pretty much in line with Ultimates. Not gonna be too different from the majority of figures you have across those properties, but he does still seem to be a little bit bigger than average. He's slightly bulky, at least compared to some of the other Transformers. Now, as far as accessories goes, Bludgeon has a pretty solid spread. But the name of the game for me with this one is just sort of awkward. Like a lot of the stuff he has is kind of awkward and it makes the figure, it makes the figure hard to use if, if that makes any sense. So to start with, we do get an extra head. So you've got a mouth open. He looks like he's, you know, kind of maniacal, very evil expression. And then you also get another helmet uh, to, to go on top. This is a more uh, comic inspired helmet. The, he the helmet that he has in the box is the more G1 toy inspired helmet. They're very similar. They're just not the same. And then you get an alternate neck as well, which is to mimic when Megatron in the comics, G2 Megatron in the comics, rips his head off and then uses his head as a trophy in his spaceship. So this neck comes on this head in the box, but they, they work across both. So you've got that. Something for Mega Megatron to hold, basically. You can't actually functionally use this with the figure, but it's cool nonetheless. I kind of like that. We get some extra hands with him. So in the box, he has a set of vertically hinged gripping hands. You get a, a singular right vertical trigger finger hand. You get a left lateral trigger finger hand. We get a single left fist or right fist rather. And then you get a left hand with the two finger pose. This is from like Bonsai Tron artwork, which is why they put it in that first figure. And I think these hands are just reused from Bonsai Tron from wave one. So he's got a decent smattering of hands, nothing too crazy, nothing really to write home about, I don't think. The rest of what he has though is all weaponry and it's it's cool, but it's awkward because of how it all goes on. So to start with, 
we get the swords and he has two different swords you get a long one and a short one and i mean they're they're basically the same kind of thing they're just different sizes so you've got like a katana and whatever a short katana is called i don't i don't know and then you've also got the scabbards that go along with them and they peg into these pouches on the side they peg in okay i feel like they don't really want to be in there but they're holding okay for now but it makes him awkward, like all of this stuff. He's got so much stuff out at the waist, his arms can't even go close to his body when you have this stuff, and that does annoy me. It's not the end of the world, but it's just not nice to look at. And then he has, as a vintage figure callback, he has the tank shield. And this can pop out if you wanted to, because uh, this is how it was actually supposed to be used in the vintage toy, I believe, was without the cannon, because this, this was a gun for the robot inside the pretender shell. And then you've got... You've got that, and it's okay. Again, it's something that I feel like it doesn't actually want to be on there. The shoulder pauldron does absolutely get in the way of that. He has a hole on both sides of him uh, for either arm, whichever you want to use. And then he also has a hole on the backpack that can be used for a, 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 a sword sheath or for the shield. The shield does make him a little back heavy though because it's it's a solid chunk of plastic. And then you also get you also get a a blaster which is sculpted in such a way that like the, the, the actual trigger on it is sculpted in a way to perfectly fit these, these trigger finger hands, which is kind of weird. But it's just done up in white. So he's, he's got more stuff than the vintage figure had. He has like all, he's, he's a mix of the comic and the vintage figure. You know, he's got that callback with uh, the helmet on both sides. He's got the, the neck to show when he's, you know, he's decapitated. He's got the swords that the vintage figure didn't have, but he had in the comics. And then he's got that shield that he had as the vintage figure. I just feel like with a lot of this stuff, it's really iffy as to whether or not it's going to stay on there very good. And I don't really like the way it looks when he has all that stuff just sort of crammed in between his arms and his hips. But he does have some cool accessories nonetheless. And I do really like this alternate head sculpt in particular. So overall, Bludgeon is pretty good. I do have some gripes with him and most of them lie around the articulation just because like a lot of the other figures so far in this line, they are really limited just based on the design and how these things are put together they can only do so much i do think he looks really good though i'm happy with the visuals the idea of a skeletal robot samurai you know definitely works for me so i'm happy to have this guy on the shelf he does look cool he's gonna pop and stand out comes with a decent amount of accessories but as i mentioned they are a little awkward to use especially with how they all peg in and there's just a whole bunch of stuff bolted onto this figure that really doesn't seem to like being pegged in Otherwise, though, he does have some cool stuff. I love the tank cannon and all, all that kind of stuff. And, of course, robot samurai with swords. It is cool no matter what, but some of that stuff is a little bit frustrating. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Transformers Wave 2 Bludgeon. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time. <laughs>